So, let's discuss our tissues, the types of fabric that make us up. We have four main types of them. They are made of similar cells as well as substances that they secrete. What do we mean by substances? For example, bone. Bone's very hard. Its main component is calcium salts. It's the cells that will then will secrete those calcium salts. So the bone tissue has cells and the substances that they secrete. We have four basic types of tissue. We have muscular tissue, nervous tissue, epithelial tissue, as well as connective tissue. In muscular tissue, muscle cells are designed to contract. Nervous tissue is made up of nerve cells that sense, conduct, as well as store information. Epithelial tissue is a bit more diverse. It composes of coverings like the skin. You see that right here in the bottom left slide. There is a skin slide. It, is made, it makes the linings, such as the inside of blood vessels. It also composes glands, which you can see on the picture here in the middle. There's a gland. And it is found in sensory receptors such as the eyes and the nose. To the slides, the one on the top left is a long slide, and then the slide to the right is found in our trachea, which is our windpipe. Finally, connective tissue is the most diverse of them all. It is blood, it is adipose tissue, which is fat tissue, it is bone, they're all part of it. So you got blood as liquid and bone that's completely solid. So hmm, how do they go together? What they do is they connect things to one another. That is their job. Let's dive a little deeper and discuss epithelial tissue. It has multiple functions. Surface epithelia covers us and provides protection. Gut lining epithelia absorbs nutrients. Glands secrete both to the exterior, like we see in sweat. That's a very good example of that. And they also secrete into the blood supply. Hormones such as insulins do that. Retinal cells in the eye transmit sensory impressions. That's a good example of the sensory function. What they do is they make electricity out of pictures, which then get sent to the brain, and voila! We can see. Olfactory cells in the nose do the same thing for smelling. Epithelial tissue connects us to the environment around us. Next, we describe the characteristics of epithelial tissue. Its cells pack close together. We call that cellularity. It is always attached to connective tissue underneath it. The basement membrane connects the epithelial tissue to the connective tissue. This attachment makes the top and the bottom surface free from one another. They're different. One is free on top and the other one is attached to the basement membrane. We call the one on top the apical surface. Epithelial tissue has no blood supply. It is avascular and gets its nutrients through diffusion. If well nourished, its cells regenerate easily. The cells making epithelial tissue come in different shapes. We have squamous cells and they look like fried eggs. They are great for diffusion. Things can pass right through them. For example, in the lungs, in the alveoli, where we need to have the oxygen go into the blood, these flat cells are paper thin and the oxygen just goes right through it. Cuboidal cells are very good for secretion and absorption. They look cube-shaped. We find them in glands and their ducts, as well as the walls of kidney tubules. Columnar cells are good for absorption, but in a place where there is more abrasion, like, for example, in the intestinal lining. They are often filled with lubricating mucus-producing goblet cells, to further decrease the abrasive forces. Epithelial tissue basically comes in either a single layer, 
which is great for a diffusion, absorption, and secretion, or it has multiple layers. And that one is preferred for protection. The single layered one is called simple. And if it's made of multiple layers, we use the term stratified. The next thing to talk about are surface differentiations. These are extensions on the apical surface of a cell. Microvilli are the smallest extensions we have. Cell membrane creates small finger-like extensions to increase the surface area for absorption. A good example are the intestinal brush border where the smallest food molecules can get absorbed. Cilia are long extensions that are designed to move substances past cells in a unidirectional manner. For example, the trachea or windpipe, they have them. This helps free mucus to be pushed out of the trachea and out into the real world. Well, sometimes we swallow it, but still. Then the last of the three other cellular extensions we find in the body are the flagella. And what they do is they move cells themselves forward. Our example we have are sperm. They have one tail and that moves the whole cell forward. Epithelial tissue cells are so tightly packed together that they have specialized junctions with specific properties connecting them. Desmosomes create molecular bonds that anchor cells to one another. Tight junctions form around the cell kind of like a zipper. This renders them impermeable to water. No H2O between them. So tight junctions make us water tight. That's how I remember that. The skin's a very good example for both of them. Gap junctions are like pores. They give cells the ability to transport material between them. One of the best examples is in the heart muscle. Ions exchange to send nerve impulses throughout the heart so it can contract as a whole unit. This brings us to glandular epithelial tissue. Hmm, we're getting there. Glandular cells secrete substances. They lie within other tissues such as goblet cells in the intestine, or what they also do is they form glands as standalone organs such as sweat glands or the pancreas. Secreted substances are often not used locally and need to be transported to a different location within the body or to the exterior. Exocrine glands transport the material via ducts to their site of action, which is outside of the body. An easy example are sweat glands. The pancreas, with its digestive enzyme that it squirts into the small intestine, is a little more tricky because it's still the outside of the body. So the food pipe is the outside of the body because it has an opening on top and guess what, in the bottom also. So we're kind of like a donut with a hole in between. We call that gut lining the topological exterior. So pancreatic enzymes to help digest are considered exocrine substances. So the pancreas is interesting because the other ones, the endocrine glands secrete the substances into the bloodstream. Hormones are good examples. The pancreas' insulin hormone is an example of that. It travels to cells to tell them to let glucose in. So look at that. The pancreas has an endocrine gland part in it and an exocrine gland part. Hmm, interesting. Lastly, that gets us a little bit more to the sensory epithelial tissue. Sensory cells in the epithelial tissue function as stimulus receptors. They transform arriving stimuli such as light, chemicals, pressure, temperature into an electrical signal and then send those mostly to the brain for processing. 